Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And a lot of recruits have officially committed to our school. So looking at this, John Cooper, one of the guys we really wanted on defense because he's got good cover skills. He commits to our school. Uh, moving down the line, Adam Nunez, the outside linebacker. He's going to come in 78 overall. He's going to be, man, he's going to be something we've been missing. We need somebody that's a sure tackler on the outside, so he's going to be there. Sean Washington, another outside linebacker, 94 acceleration. He's going to be pretty good as well, so they're probably going to be fighting for playing time. Ronnie Smith, a guy that we're likely going to redshirt, and Patrick Toshi, another guy that we really wanted because we need somebody who's going to take the reins from Alex Brown when he does need to leave, uh, which is going to be after next season. Jack Kleck, a tight end. We did need a tight end that could pretty much play behind Ben Miller and be the future at tight end. So we like what he brings to the table. He's got some speed. Uh, got got to work on speed a little bit, 77 speed, but he's good enough. Joshua Wesselman, a center, 72 overall as well. Run blocking at 80. Impact block at 80 as well. He's pretty good. Alex Vogel is a guy that we're probably going to redshirt, but he has 80 pass block. So his awareness must be pretty low if he's 68 overall and he's got 80 pass block. I mean, that's pretty good for a tackle. And then Ethan Le Lecker is a kicker who we'll probably need in the future going forward because Adam Davis is a junior as well. So let's look at where the, what the standings are looking like. So as you guys know, we are number one in the country, but looking at our side of the, of the conference, Oklahoma State, we just beat them. They're three and two. It looks like we pretty much have uh, the path to the uh, conference title game locked up. Because if you look at our stats, Albert Vick, 13 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Alex Brown, 18 touchdowns. He's on track to uh, break his own record of touchdowns in a season. Uh, nobody on this side of the conference really worth talking about. But Iowa State, they are 7-1 up to this point, 4-1 in conference. Let's look at their remaining schedule. They do have Houston, Texas Tech. Texas and Baylor so they have actually a tough schedule to end out starting with Houston this week and then Texas in a couple weeks so they kind of have their work cut up I hope I play them because I, I would like to see a different team that I play I have not played Iowa State yet so that would be quite the matchup to see so uh, let's just look at national rank and see where we rank up nationally because we are getting towards the end of the season we have four games left so UCLA is still in the feeder right behind us but look at this, man. It's only us and UCLA now as undefeated teams. And Alabama's, I mean, they're creeping up. I mean, they probably, they lost to Texas A&M, I believe. Let's see who they lost to. Oh, they lost to Georgia. So they lost to Georgia the opening week, and they haven't looked back since. So they're kind of on the prowl as well. I kind of want to play Alabama. If we do make it to a national championship, I kind of want to play Alabama over anybody else because you know they're the powerhouse. But uh, let's just look at some of the awards that we might be uh, getting as far as you know end of the season awards on so maxwell alex brown actually isn't in first monster from ucla is in first so he's been killing this year alex brown is isn't head for the walter camp though so uh if we keep going on the line look at this the left outside linebacker for iowa state is number one into bednarik nagurski as well and then we keep going down the line alex brown for the walker uh blitnikoff nothing there so i'm just gonna keep going here and see if we find Anybody on our team, Todd Williams for the Lombardi. Wow. Let me just look back at that. So he actually has 10 sacks on the season, which is going to be his most that he's had uh, so far because he's tied to last year. So he's actually having a pretty big season. Hunter Greggs has definitely took a step back, but Todd Williams looks like he's on top of his game. He looks like he's even better. He's got just as many tackles last year with four games left and the same amount of sacks. So that's pretty good for a guy that started out remember when we got him he was only 68 overall he's still only 74 so i mean he's been killing so far uh doesn't look like we have anybody else that uh oh paul miller looks like he's gonna be we always have the best returner every year because we're, we're pretty good at returning kicks so uh and the computer it really isn't it seems like the most i ever see a guy return uh for touchdowns is one look at it look at the top returns here he has none this guy has one. This guy has none. So let's just hop into this game, man. We are actually going up against Kansas, so this shouldn't be too tough of a game. Uh, looks like they're 102 in points per game. So <laughs> let's force some turnovers. I want to see some turnovers. Uh, maybe not user turnovers. I just want to see some turnovers in general. I want to see Todd Williams. I want to see him continue this awesome season that he's having. So let's hop into it. Let's go. I actually forgot that Kansas runs this triple option. So. 
already know. I, I thought this was going to be an uh, easy game going into this. But I know this is going to be a tough game because I know how the CPU Heisman cheese runs the triple option. It's pretty much like unstoppable. I mean, they can run it at will, it seems like. So here they are starting it early, giving it to Riley on the carry to the outside that time, getting a nice nine-yard carry, but facing a third and inches inside the red zone, breaking a tackle from Ron Sands, and Riley is going to break this one for the touchdown, the 27-yard touchdown run on that one, and that first drive seemed way too easy for the Kansas Jayhawks. So now we have to come back on offense, match what they did, and here is Alex Brown getting the receipt, uh, reception uh, for a nice first down that time. So facing a third and five this time, Jimmy Ward's going to get some good blocking, get up for a 16-yard rush that time. So facing another third down on this drive, this time, Kevin Oliver is going to get the slant across the middle, get to about the 25-yard line for another first down on a third down. So here is, this time, Ben Miller getting across the middle, getting another reception, this time for 23 yards. So now second and goal inside the 10. Play action with two backers in the backfield. Albert Vick's going to run this one in, take it himself. And he's going to get in for the five-yard touchdown run. And this is going to be a 7-7 seven, seven game here in the first quarter. But Kansas, you know they're going to run this option. But this time they run a pass pattern. And this time their tight end gets open. Todd Moore for the 26-yard reception. So now facing a second and four. Williams this time gets the carry. And he's going to pick up a block from his receiver that time. And he's going to get into the end zone. And like I said, this triple option from the computer it just they make it seem so easy they get in for another touchdown so it's a 14-7 lead for the Kansas Jayhawks as Alex Brown puts the corner back on skates that time and we get the first down so now facing a first and 10 close to about the 35 yard line Albert Vick's gonna roll out right throw across the field and Jamel Cooley is gonna get there for the touch or for the big reception that time for 40 yards and that's going to set us up with a couple of plays inside the 10-yard line with Alex Brown capping off the drive, getting in for the one-yard touchdown run. And another touchdown for Alex Brown added to the counter. So now it's 14-14 going into the second quarter. And here is Dom Williams once again getting the carry up the middle, breaking tackles. And now they're in good position to about the 50-yard line this time. Uh, Tabor is going to get the reception on that one across the middle of the field. So Nelson's going to run the triple option a couple of plays later for another first down. We just cannot stop this triple option. So now uh, facing a third and goal, Nelson's going to drop back, throw to Williams this time on the screen pass, and we didn't see that one coming. We were too busy covering other receivers in the screen pass opens up wide open in Kansas they they just keep scoring so now facing a first down on the next drive Albert Vick this time throws an interception the receiver stopped that time instead of keep instead of uh going towards the sideline he kind of stopped and Albert Vick throws where he was going and he throws an interception but back out on defense we do stop him on a third down stop Don Williams so now two minutes left in this half, we get the ball back after a punt, and this time Kevin Oliver's getting the 13-yard reception. So can we put together a two-minute drive, tie this game up going into half because we do get ball at half. But here's Ben Miller getting another reception for a first down. So facing a first and 10, a minute 40 left in this half. This time Ben Miller's going to get another reception, but he's going to get smacked, and now it's going to be on the ground. And the Kansas Jayhawks defense is going to fall on that one. Ben Miller cannot... Hold on to the ball after taking a big hit. Look at that one. The, hit the ball right out of his hands that time. And Kansas is going to take over past the 50-yard line. But they do attempt to run a draw play. and But they don't get it. And they attempt to kick a long field goal. And that one was pretty close. And that is going to take us to halftime as we're down by seven points going into half. And we just got to string together some defensive plays because up to this point, we are not stopping their offense at all. So here is Alvar Vix leading this offense back on the field to start the second half, getting the nice scramble that time. So facing a third and two, Alex Brown's going to get the carry this time, pick up a nice block that time from our receiver on the outside. And that is going to be a touchdown for the Marquette offense. 
and I got to credit that touchdown to the blocking because without that blocking, Alex Brown doesn't find that open lane. So here is this Kansas offense. Don Williams is just doing his thing up to this point, running all over our defense. But finally, we come up with a stop this time, stopped by Red Johnson. So we do force the punt here in the third quarter. So now here's Alex Brown. We got to feed that man for the nice nine yard carry so three minutes left in this third quarter play action pass this time jamel cooley is going to get open they're too worried about alex brown and jamel cooley a guy that is a potential a thousand yard receiver gets open for the long bomb that time and that's going to be a swing of momentum now we have a seven point lead in this game but kansas you know they can run the ball but this time trying to run a screen gotcha, pass bitch. and nelson gets swallowed up and that was a third down so now they have to punt the ball away so now it's about a minute and a half left in the third quarter alex brown getting the handoff up the middle so i i think if we get one or two more scores we can put this game away we come up with a couple defensive plays but here's alex brown once again getting a few handoffs here alex brown getting up into field goal range so now facing a third and two albert vick's gonna drop back from the shotgun this time finding ben miller gotta hold on to that ball this time don't fumble it he does and he keeps it so now we got another first down but setting up a second and seven on this one ben miller getting open once again i trust that he won't fumble one more time I, I trust his hands but now to cap off the drive kevin oliver gets open we nickel and dime him all the way up the field on these easy completions and we take the 14 point lead here in the fourth quarter so now five minutes left in the fourth quarter kansas has an opportunity they can score here they're down by two scores they can score a touchdown maybe kick an outside kick but here on a second and nine trying to throw a screen pass that time to the receiver ray gray but now facing a third down nelson's gonna give the ball off to dom williams and he's not gonna get the first down he's gonna actually fall on one of the defenders get up and try to get the first down but now it's the fourth quarter they gotta go for it Facing a fourth and nine, do or die time. Nelson's going to have a clean pocket, have nobody to throw to. He's going to throw out to his man across the field, but he's going to be short of the first down marker. And that's going to be it for Kansas. They collapse when it matters most. They don't score any points in the second half. They get shut out. But what a defensive turnaround by our defense. Alex Brown does his thing on offense. But, I mean, the story of this game was, dang, we couldn't stop them at all in the first half. But then in the second half, we turn on the clamps and we clamp them up all the way to the end. And Don Williams had a great game versus us, but it just, when it came down to it, the defensive line stepped up. Todd Williams, all those guys, they stepped up. They stuffed a bunch of runs with allowed a lot of tackles for the linebackers. And it opened up a lot of at least clear pass to the ball carry in the second half. And Kansas just couldn't do anything anymore. So good all-around game we had to clean up that first half a little bit but i mean it's expected going up against a triple option team so hit subscribe hit that like button we're getting towards the end of the season and uh, i mean we're having a pretty good season number one in the country let's just keep it rolling let's go